Oh, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. If Polyev and his convoy supporters have ensured Justin Trudeau another term as prime minister. Welcome everyone to Ratioed. My name is Harrison Faulkner. What a week, guys. Pierre Polyev becomes a new leader of the Conservative Party of Canada and the meltdown on social media has been spectacular. Social media feels as alive once again. We've got TikToks and tweets, journalists losing their minds, activists losing their minds. Heck, we've even got a Conservative MP who's decided to quit the Conservative Party because he just can't handle Pierre Polyev as leader. Good, no more Liberals needed in Conservative Caucus. Well, on the show, we will be reacting to hilarious anti-Polyev TikToks, two from kind of no-name TikTokers. We're gonna be breaking it down on the show and having a good laugh. Also on the show, the Federal Green Party of Canada have decided to self-destruct because, of course, of the very real, very dangerous and sickening crime of misgendering their pansexual interim leader. Yes, because the Green Party misgendered Amita Kuttner, their pansexual interim leader. Well, of course, resignations must come. The party must self-destruct. There must be statements released about this horrible, violent incident. Well, I think it's time someone else had a good laugh at the Green Party, and that's what we're gonna do on this show. And we wrap up the show as we always do with the Ratio of the Week Award. It couldn't go to anyone more deserving this week, guys. You all know who I'm talking about. This journalist put on the most epic meltdown I have perhaps ever seen at a press conference for an opposition leader. You know who I'm talking about. We'll get there on the show later. The common question for this episode is simple. Do you have faith that Pierre Polyev will, unlike his predecessors in Aaron O'Toole and Andrew Scheer, actually maintain his leadership promises? Will he be a conservative as leader of the opposition? Will he actually oppose Justin Trudeau or will he fall back like Aaron O'Toole and Andrew Scheer did in letting this government go on unopposed? Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you have confidence in Pierre Polyev as the leader of the opposition? Drop a like on this video and share it around. And if you're feeling generous, consider donating to us at donate.tnc.news. The link is in the description of this video. All right, let's get into these TikToks. Once again, we are prepared to dip our toes into the TikTok waters, navigate the absurd lefty takes to pick out some of the very best on the show. And we found what I think is quite a good variety of takes. You've got you've got two that are of, of really unhinged leftists on Twitter. And then for good measure, it wouldn't be a TikTok reaction, but if we didn't highlight Canada's very famous TikTok girl from Global News. She, of course, had to get in on the action, and we have that coming up. Now, let's dive into this first TikTok and see what the lefties are really saying about Pierre Polyev. The true bro is not my favorite. Do I think he's the worst prime minister ever? No. But here's a few things to consider. First of which is the left is the NDPs, the Greens, parties like that. The Liberal Party is center-right, center, center-left center at best. The Liberal Party is center-right. Do you hear that, guys? The Liberal Party is center-right, center-left at best. Is that what you think of when you hear Justin Trudeau tell Canadians where they can and can't go? Is that what you think when you hear Christian Freeland freezing the bank accounts of peaceful protesters? Does, does the center-right party come to mind? <laughs> Unreal, I wish I lived in these guys' world. It's not actually a huge jump for the moderate conservatives to jump over to the liberals. It's not a huge jump for moderate conservatives to jump over to the liberals. I would venture to guess that there won't be many moderate conservatives voting liberal. Then again, there are people like John Charest in the party who probably would consider themselves to be more liberal than conservative in private. So perhaps maybe this person has a point. Have the liberals done a great job of appealing to them lately? No, not really. But thanks to the conservatives, they haven't had to because the conservatives have done their work for them. Because by going with such an extreme choice, whose values are so far removed from the average Canadian. Pierre Pauly of the extreme choice, whose values are so far removed from the average Canadian, as this TikToker says. Yes, is that why Pierre Pauly have won 68% of the Conservative Party vote? Is that why he champions values like freedom? The main point of his campaign was all about freedom. Or we can talk about the other policies that he had, like defunding the CBC, giving Canadians the hope to buy a home making their own medical choices. Is that so far extreme from the average Canadian viewer? Is that so far extreme from the average Canadian? Or is Justin Trudeau, the man who's really only in power because of a supply and confidence agreement, otherwise known as some sort of coalition deal with the weak-willed and spineless NDP? It's tough to make these giant leaps in logic and the facts so clearly 
speak to the opposite. The facts so clearly actually say that Pierre Polyev has struck a chord with Canadians, many of whom may not even con have considered themselves to be conservative prior to Polyev joining the leadership election. Don't forget now that the conservatives have something like over 600,000 members. Because as Pierre and his base are actively pushing the moderates out of their party. The party next closest to their values is simply the Liberal Party. Do I personally want seven more years of Trudeau? Absolutely not. But Polyev and his convoy have all but assured. Oh, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. If Polyev and his convoy supporters have ensured Justin Trudeau another term as Prime Minister. All right, so there was that shocker. Let's see what else we have here. The, the, the caption is, I detest conservatives, but there were a few points that he made that I 100% agreed with. Oh, how dare you agree with Pierre Polyev? You know, you can't, you can't, you can't agree with the conservatives on TikTok. That's, that's a bad idea. So I see this kind of question fairly regularly. And I'm not calling this person out. They're allowed to think what they think. But it shows a much oh, good. They're allowed to think what they think. Movement. He's a political inkblot. His statements, his policies are so devoid of content. They're so boiled down to just a slogan. Fire the gatekeepers. Put you back in control of your lives. Get your freedom back. What does any of that mean? Okay, point taken. That doesn't change the fact that every other politician does that too. Don't forget that Justin Trudeau, before becoming prime minister, said that he would run the most open and transparent government in Canadian history. How did that turn out? It means whatever you want it to. And that's by design. He attacks outwards constantly. It's a perpetual reign of attacks on Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh, unions, gatekeepers, that person who messed up his sandwich at lunch, and basically everybody you can think of. <laughs> this is good. I think I'm starting to understand this here. The left want conservatives to just attack themselves. You can't attack the left if you're the conservatives. You have to attack yourselves. You have to call your own base racist. You have to distance and denounce as the left so often requires conservatives to do in this country. That's what they want you to do. They, they, they think it's wrong for the opposition leader, the new opposition leader, while running to be, to take that position, to attack the government, to attack the party propping up the government and the NDP. That's wrong. You have to attack yourselves. He blames and blames, and then makes incredibly non-specific promises. Incredibly non-specific promises, like defunding the CBC. I think if I parse through the words defunding the CBC, somewhere in there, I get to the conclusion that the money will no longer, the public money, the billion dollars, will, fingers crossed, no longer be flowing to the propaganda state broadcaster. I think it's pretty clear enough for me. Also, the statements like making your own medical decisions. That seems pretty straightforward to me. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments. Does defunding the CBC and making your own medical decisions seem straightforward or does that seem vague? I, I, I kind of think I understand what he's saying there. You know, other than determining who can enter this country, the apps you have to fill out and the declarations you have to have to come back home to your country, internet censorship, other than those, maybe perhaps there isn't any freedom to give back, but I would like to hear someone challenge those because I think a lot of Canadians don't feel free right now and that's why that slogan was successful. But of course, to lefties on TikTok, you really can't expect that much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to pause and reflect on a shocking, disturbing, sickening act that took place in Ottawa, or at least I think it was in Ottawa. And, and before I go any further, I just wanna say that it brings me no joy having to recant the horrific incident that occurred in Ottawa. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the transgender, pansexual, non-binary interim leader of the Green Party, Amita Kuttner, well, something really bad happened. She was misgendered at a Green Party leadership event. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I can't believe it. This is the kind of thing that, that must be stopped. Hate has no place in Ottawa. Now, putting all jokes aside, we have to say the Green Party is in full-on self-destruction mode. I want to take you through this hilarious story, which illustrates, in my opinion, just how ridiculous this federal party is. So it starts off on September 3rd. Right now, the Green Party is going through a leadership election, or they're about to launch their leadership election. The current leader of the Green Party is Amita Kuttner. Now, this person identifies as transgender, pansexual, non-binary, and goes by they, them, or he, him pronouns. Now, logging in to this virtual leadership event on September 3rd, Amita Kuttner was faced with a horrific act of violence. You see, when she logged on to this event, she was faced with the, with, with, with probably the worst thing that could ever happen. Seeing the wrong pronouns put beside your name, I know. You see the face of agony, the face of shock and surprise. Amita Kuttner, she, L, 
So because of this, on the call, the people running the Green Party virtual event apologized to the leader. And after, it wasn't enough. So of course, after that, the Green Party leader had to put out a statement about this horrific act of misgendering. The Green Party leader wrote, on Saturday, September 3rd, at a public media event kicking off the Green Party of Canada's leadership contest, the wrong pronouns were presented beside my name in a way that I could not change myself. I acknowledge that mistakes can happen and the need to learn from them. What happened here impacted me much more than a slip of the tongue. It made me feel hurt and isolated at a moment that should have been filled with inspiration and anticipation. Over the years, the party has documented reports that indicate a systemic issue disproportionately affecting black, indigenous, and racialized people and 2SLGBTQIA+ plus people. And I hope many more stories will be able to be shared so that this incident can be a catalyst for change. After this statement, the president of the Green Party was forced to resign. And another counselor, the Ontario counselor, was also forced to resign. So because of this misgendering act, because of this act of violence, the Green Party has self-destructed. It also turns out that all of the leadership candidates also issued a statement on that call condemning this misgendering. So you see, they're really preoccupied with saving the planet, so much so that they have to take time out of their day to defend the transgender, non-binary, pansexual, they, them leader. And then it's not done. You see, a day after the statement, Amina Kuttner wanted to go back out on Twitter to let us all know that she was feeling fine, she was recovering well. Ah, I keep saying she. Someone stop me, I I'm just so bad. Amina Kuttner put out a statement on Twitter to let us know that they were doing fine. Does that work? I'm fine for everyone who's been wondering and asking. I deal with a lot all the time and know many others should do as well. Creating spaces of care has to be taken seriously and for ongoing problems to actually be solved. So most people on Twitter who've been following the story have had a good laugh, had a good chuckle, made sure that they got their licks in on this hilarious story. And there's one man on Twitter, however, that I, do, I feel deserves extra recognition. I, I consider him to be Canada's governor general of the Twitter trolls especially on one side of the debate. His name is John Kay. He writes over at Quillette. I don't know if he likes that title, but I don't really care. I'm giving that to him anyway. He, he never really misses his chance to pile on on Twitter, and he never really misses when he comes swinging. So, of course, he got involved at this and quote-tweeted Amita Kuttner, and he wrote, Canadian progressive politics in a nutshell. Green Party leader who Wikipedia tells us identifies as non-binary, transgender, and pansexual and uses they, them, and he, him pronouns is misgendered by an electronic caption and responds to it by denouncing this system of oppression. He also responded in the replies to Amita Kuttner's statement. He writes, reads exactly like satire. Imagine how somebody with any kind of real problem would respond to these words. So then Amita comes in and responds to John Kay, and she writes, Apparently, misgendering isn't depression. Someone should tell the Supreme Court of Canada. Let's have some fun. Help me raise one dollar for each of the 68,321 followers to give an anti-oppression a larger platform than him. Hashtag trans rights are human rights. Wait a second, have I just committed a crime on this show by accident? Well, if it's been it, guys, it's been a fun ride. I've had a lot of fun doing this show, but... I'm afraid that I've committed a serious crime. You see, I've misgendered the leader of a political party in Amita Kuttner of the Green Party. For that, I must pay the price. For that, I must repent for my crime, my horrific crime of misgendering Amita Kuttner. The Green Party will be the Green Party. The leaders of the Green Party will also do what they do, which is oftentimes hilarious, oftentimes worthy of mockery. All of this, however, forces me to ask a very simple question, which is this. How is it possible that the leader of the Green Party at the time, was able to debate Justin Trudeau, Erin O'Toole, Jagmeet Singh, and the leader of the Bloc Québécois, when Maxime Bernier of the PPC wasn't allowed to even debate the federal candidates. The Green Party was able to muster less than 400,000 votes across the country. Less than 400,000 votes. Maxime Bernier and the PPC in the last federal election got 850,000 votes. And they got almost 5% of the popular vote. 5% of the popular vote compared to the Green Party's 400, less than 400,000 seats and 2.3% of the popular vote. The Green Party are somehow more serious than the People's Party. They're allowed to debate the federal candidates on the, on the debate stage in front of the nation and the PPC aren't allowed to debate? Give me a break. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. Here we go, it's hardware time, and the winner this week is probably the least surprising winner. Now, we've been doing something different on the show for the past few weeks. Instead of telling you who the winner is at the top of the show, we hint at it, and then we tell you at the end of the show when it's the segment, so we don't let on who the winner is. We force you to watch the program to figure out who wins, and 
We let it on pretty easily this episode. You've probably seen the clips. It's been going mega viral on Twitter. Here's Pierre Polyev doing his first media availability as leader of the opposition in Ottawa. The clips have, been, have gotten hundreds of thousands of views. The clip I posted onto Twitter has, I think, something like 200, over 200,000 views. Now, listen to the voice you hear in the background. The voice you hear in the background is David Aiken, the chief political correspondent for Global News. And at one point, he's very proud of his title. He even goes on to repeat it himself to justify his heckling. Watch this clip, and you tell me if the legacy media in this country aren't having a total and complete meltdown over Pierre Polyev as the new leader. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your presence here today. Uh, before I begin, let me just say that... Uh, thank, thank you very much. Am I being, I'm being heckled here by, by, by the... By, thank you very much for your congratulations. Thank you very much for your questions. I'm going to begin my remarks now. But will you take some questions afterwards? Justin Trudeau is out of touch, and Canadians are out of money. The cost of mo government is driving up the cost of living. A half a trillion dollars of inflationary deficits have bid up the cost of the goods we buy and the, and the interest that Canadians pay. The cost for workers and businesses to produce the goods that we buy. On top of that, Trudeau proposes yet more spending to bid up costs Trudeau even further. Some reporters today. Are you the more things, the, the more he today? spends, the more things cost. It is just inflation. Their homes, and to buy a home in the very first place. I'll put my hand the reason that the, look. <laughs> yep. So I mean, we, we, we have we we have uh, basically a, a liberal heckler who snuck in here today I'm a to. Heckler. Well, I'm the, 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 the chief political correspondent right. of that organization. Are you going to let you me make my mistake? You may remember me from the guy who actually reported yeah. first on the prime minister breaking the law. Yeah. Are you going to we let me make like my mistake? We just like to ask a question. Say, yes, I've, never, I've actually never questions. seen you heckling the I've prime minister. I've done it before. Ask Mr. Barry back in the day. heckling the prime minister. Look, bottom line is this. Are you going to take some questions at the end of this statement? Yes, I'm taking, I'll be taking two questions at the very end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I'm going to start my statement again. So there you have it, guys. Another clear-cut example of legacy media shooting straight down the line, reporting the facts for Canadians, holding truth to power. Oh, wait, sorry. That's not quite what we saw, is it? What we saw there was David Aiken of Global News yelling and heckling at Pierre Polyev, not even letting Pierre Polyev speak before hurling questions at him. And then when Pierre Polyev finally decides to stop what he's saying and actually acknowledge David Aiken and his poor behavior. David Aiken proudly proclaims that he is David Aiken, the chief political correspondent of Global News, the very powerful, very influential David Aiken. Wow, David, great for you, bud. You embarrassed yourself in front of what is quickly becoming a national audience on Twitter. Everyone is mocking you for this ridiculous job. Anyway, you're probably asking yourself, okay, fair enough, we've all seen the clip already, where's the ratio? Well, the ratio came in pretty quick after that. David Aiken tweeted as he usually does about press conferences happening, so he tweeted about Jagmeet Singh's Thunder Bay press conference. And let's just say he has been ruthlessly ratioed for this tweet. The tweet, which I'm sure probably only gets about one or two comments and five or six likes. These are just usual tweets he puts out notifying people of when press conferences are happening. Well, this one was a little different. You see, this one, at the time of recording, has over 850 comments and less than 30 likes. He's got 25 likes for 853 comments, a brutal ratio. <laughs> We've got some comments, which we'll get into, but I want to be fair, unlike Global News, and actually provide some fair context. David Aiken did actually apologize for his behavior at the Polyev press conference. He wrote on Twitter, Lots of readers and viewers called me about today's Parliament Hill presser. Many said I was rude and disrespectful to Pierre Polyev. I agree. I'm sorry for that. We all want politicians to answer questions, but there are better ways at making that point. I have to say that is a very classy statement from David Aiken. It takes a lot for someone to apologize, and David Aiken did that, and rightly so. Now, I also have to say on top of that, Pierre Polyev held a media availability, his first media availability as leader of the opposition, and he only took two questions, one in English and one in French. Now, I'm sorry, but that's pretty weak in my opinion. We all know the legacy media will never give the conservatives a fair shake, but even so, stand there, take the questions, put them back in their place, and let the journalists expose themselves. Now, you guys had some great comments for David Aiken and his ridiculous temper tantrum in Ottawa. This person writes, 
Nice little fit you through today. Reminds me of the convoy days. Yes, exactly. Takes us all back, doesn't it? Takes us back to the good old days when every single legacy media journalist refused to report the news fairly. And yet they still wonder why Canadians don't trust them. What a mystery that is. We've got this person commenting, now that is a ratio. And it certainly is. My goodness, that is a ratio. <laughs> and this person writes, Pierre let you off easy today. Exactly. He actually did let David Aiken off easy. He could have stood there, taken his questions, and then went even deeper on him. That's what this legacy media needs. This legacy media needs to be put firmly back in their place. And they need an opposition leader who's not going to run away from them, but challenge them. Take them on, head on, Pierre. Take them on and let's have some fun with it. I, I wanna see you stand and take these questions, man, come on. David Aiken, you are the rightful winner of the award. Congratulations, my friend, well done, certainly deserving. Winner, Ganyo. Well, the bar is being raised big time on the Ratio of the Week Award, guys. The skills we are seeing from these journalists, from these politicians, expert skills at being ratioed. Will we see someone challenge the king of the ratio, Omar al Gabra, for his crown? We'll have to wait and see to find out with that one. That's going to do it for us this week on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. My name is Harrison Faulkner. I'll catch you on Fake News Friday. And this is Ratio.